the channel. I am so happy that you are here. Before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate you guys subscribing and those who have been commenting. I love interacting with you guys. Those of you who are new here, welcome. So happy that you are here. Please hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more content from me. Let's get started. Today we are going to be talking about my diagnosis story. So I was diagnosed with type one diabetes 10 days before my 10th birthday. So I'm coming up on 15 years in May. So 15 years, that's a long time. I'm honestly like, I can't believe that it has been 15 years. And I also realized that before I started this video, I probably should have like emotionally prepared for this story because I just, I can't believe how far technology has come, how far I've come, how far my family has come because I will say when an individual is diagnosed with type one diabetes, not only is your life changing, but your entire family is changing. I so I am just gonna go from the beginning to the end, like I said. so. I was in third grade. I just remember constantly, like whenever I was in class, I would ask to go get some water. So, so thirsty. Like I, when I say I just, I almost like couldn't breathe because I was so thirsty. So I would run to the water fountain. Friend came home after school one time and I went straight to the fridge to get water. And she, I remember her specifically telling my mom, yeah, um, Victoria's been really thirsty lately. And I remember like being so pissed at her. I don't know, like, I mean, this was just like, I was in third grade, you guys, but I was so pissed at her. I was like, why would you tell that, be, tell that to my mom? Because I know like my mom was kind of getting the hint, like something's off here. Cause I was already wetting the bed. Just other signs were coming up. So she goes, yeah, Victoria's been drinking a lot of water lately. And I was like, no, I haven't. Like, why would you say that to her? Like, I just was trying to cover it up. And my mom was like, oh, really? And I don't think I was telling like anyone that I was wetting the bed, but that I know that's a pretty big one um, because I was just so thirsty that I was wetting the bed at night and I wasn't waking up. So my grandma, my dad's mom is a nurse or was a nurse, she's retired now. And my mom was, I think she was out of town. My grandma was. And my mom was texting my grandma, like something's not right with Victoria, blah, 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 blah. And my grandma apparently did not, like my grandma knew what it was, but she didn't want to tell my mom. She didn't want to scare her, but she did tell my mom, you need to take Victoria to an urgent care or the hospital like right away. Well, it was a Sunday. So a lot of places were closed. So I remember we went to the one in Mooresville. Every time I pass it, I get chills. Like I just remember thinking of that exact day. My parents were very calm and collected when they took me. We finally go into the doctor and um, my mom tells him like some of my symptoms. Obviously I lost a lot of weight. I was really thirsty and then I was wetting the bed and I'm sure the doctor was like, well, I know what this is, but they took my blood test or they pricked my finger and tested my blood sugar. I honestly don't remember the conversation that was going on at the doctors, like what they were talking about with my parents, but I do remember what the doctor looked like and his face when he walked in. Um, there's just like, it's so weird to me. I mean, I was still like really little, but it's just weird to me that I remember specific things, but not the entire thing. The he came in and he said, well, Victoria, it looks like you have type one diabetes and I remember <sighs> was not prepared for this at all. Um, I remember when the doctor walked in and um, after he said that to me, I looked at my dad and I said, daddy, am I going to die? Because I had no idea like what was going on, but I saw the concern from my parents' face, especially my dad's. And then he said, he like rolled his eyes and he's like, Victoria, don't be ridiculous. And I immediately like sat on his lap the whole time. I did not want to leave. 
so just being little and not understanding like what was going on um and that my parents really had to put on that brave face for me was really hard and like I said looking back I really I see that now but like during it obviously I didn't really understand it and so they told my parents that I needed to go to the hospital um I don't even know I, I probably should have asked my mom some of these details but I don't remember if it was like immediately because I think my blood sugar was I don't want to say only but it was like only I think for something and normally when things like that happen you're like 700 or something like some a lot of people have scary numbers when they went to the hospital um their blood sugar was ridiculous but mine was only I I want to say like 380 or like 480 something like that which if you know anything about diabetes you have to stay in between the range of 80 and 150 so clearly there was some issues there so I can't remember if the doctor was like you guys need to go to the hospital ASAP or if they were just like pack your things like you guys need to go to the hospital because the only reason why I say that is because um we kind of took our sweet time going to the hospital I went to the hospital that night and um after the doctor's office I think what happened was from my mom's point of view uh he was the doctor said like stay away from sugary foods like in, until you get to the hospital so we went to eat at show mars and again i remember the exact it was in mooresville north carolina and i remember which booth we went to but i don't remember like the same booth that we sat at i remember i had like lemonade with dinner or yeah it was lemonade but i don't remember what i ate with uh for dinner <laughs> But my mom, now looking back, my mom was like, why did I give that to you when the doctor said stay away from sugar? But whenever I used to live in North Carolina, and I would have to like run to the stores by that show Mars. I literally got the chills. I don't think that I, I ate at that restaurant like 13 years later. Like it took me so long to even walk into that restaurant just because it gave me bad juju so i just remember sitting in the booth and it was like basically the last supper not trying to sound dramatic but it was very quiet so anyways um my dad told me that i could pick out anything from i think it was like walmart or target i think it was walmart is where we ended up going but he said you can pick one thing to take with you to the hospital and i'll have to insert the picture here because at the time it was just so fun and i, I mean I, at, at the moment when I was diagnosed, when the doctor told me what I had, I was sad. But then after I was like, ooh, I get all these things. Like I have special treatment, you know? Cause I didn't know like what the heck was coming my way. When they first put you in the hospital, when you were diagnosed, they don't want you on an insulin pump. They put you on injections obviously, cause you have to get trained on the insulin pump. And it's kind of just a lot to throw on somebody as soon as you get diagnosed. So I was on insulin injections, you pick out a stuffed animal and you got to practice your pump changes on there as well as insulin injections so we had that going for us i would like do sight changes on a stuffed animal which was fun to kind of like practice on for me but i don't think it was really processing like what in my mind what was going to happen and what my every my day-to-day -day would look like so then after we got out of the hospital i'm pretty sure i only stayed there for a night not too long after, it was just more of I stayed at the hospital to get my blood sugar back down and then people came in to like train us and train my parents on like how to count carbs like you're literally starting from scratch literally and then I we didn't have like the Dexcom growing up so my mom had to wake up I don't even know how I should ask her I should have done like a Q&A next to her but I remember her waking up I want to say every three hours in the middle of the night to check my blood sugar and make sure that I wasn't like dead or dropping like because we didn't have the monitor to beep at the parents or beep at me like hey you're going low and I was on injections just for a little bit and then we went in to get like finish up the pump training and I also had to pick out my insulin pump that I wanted and I think I've mentioned it in previous videos if you watched them but this was my first insulin pump I had it for about two years and then I decided I don't really want this pump. And like there was a couple of reasons why. One, it was really bothering my skin. It, I was reacting really bad to the adhesive. And then two, I hated 
wearing like I couldn't wear a dress with it it was my mom made me these this insulin pump kind of band so I could put my pump in it but I couldn't wear what I wanted with the pump and that really aggravated me the third thing is I really just wanted to be normal having an insulin pump in class it would go off everyone was like you're not supposed to have phones in the class or like what is this like they didn't understand and I just wanted to be normal I wanted to look normal. I wanted to be as normal as possible. So I got off of that pump and I was on injections up until last year. So now I am on the T-Slim, which I absolutely love. Living life without this is very scary to me. I will say that I have had a lot of anxiety. I really didn't know where it all stemmed from until I got older and a majority of my anxiety does come from my illness but when I say that when after I got this pump it has changed my life for the better I cannot see myself going back to injections it was just really hard to control my blood sugar when I got this I think I've only gone low five times like I kid you not I go low like once a month I was just telling Tanner I was like I can't remember the last time I've gone low. I don't feel sick anymore because I'm not going up and down, up and down. So it's just crazy to see technology and how much it's changed. Uh My third grade teacher, she had this project for us at the end of the year and we had been practicing it like for the past like three months before I got diagnosed, we would go to the computer lab and we would we had our own little groups and we had to sing like in front of everybody. And she was gonna make like a CD and put everyone's um, music video together or whatnot. And I did not wanna sing in front of people. Like that was one thing where I was like, no, I don't like singing in front of people, whether I'm good or not. I also don't like public speaking. <laughs> I got out of that because I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and honestly I think I told my mom when I was in the hospital I was like well at least I don't have to perform that song in front of everybody like I'll take this instead of that. So I'm just the fact that I compared that like I'd much rather have diabetes than perform in front of my classmates so anyways they ended up putting the CD together and the class did it in my honor because I wasn't there and I couldn't even finish the school year out with them. I ended up you know going into the fourth grade obviously but i didn't get that end of year experience but I, it was fine with me because i didn't want to sing i remember it was love song by sarah Bareilles. this is just my diagnosis story i don't want to keep you guys too long if you made it this far i really appreciate you guys watching and just being there and to my family i just want to say thank you guys so much for being strong for me when i couldn't and I love and appreciate everybody who has been on this wild journey with me since I was little. It's been a long journey and look where I am now. I am. I saw this comment on social media and this lady said, I've had diabetes for over 30 years. Like I promise you'll make it. And that is just so hopeful for me. Like I'm at 15 years this year and I've been having to deal with like last year, my huge issue was, okay, I've had diabetes for this long and I still have so much longer. Like, I don't know how much longer I can go dealing with this every single day, waking up thinking diabetes, diabetes, like it's just always in the back of my mind. And last year I really had to deal with that, ne those negative thoughts in my head and try to cope with it the best way that I could. So seeing that these people have had this illness for so long and they were able to have kids, they were able to have their dream job, they were able to go on these trips, like it's so inspiring. So I hope that this video can be inspiring to those who are just diagnosed with type 1 diabetes or if you know of someone who just got diagnosed with diabetes. 15 years in May and I've learned so much, but thank you guys so much for watching and I hope this video brought you some sort of joy and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.